Can you can you please match our, our leg folding? We we all have our. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull my cable out with my left foot. I can try and. These pants are very restrictive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you were better before. All right. Great, I'm going back. I'm going back. We're okay. I'm exhausted now. If we can all take five and then just sit in silence for a little while, then we'll come back to this. Walk the Moon, welcome to British Shores. How are we feeling? Not jet lagged at all? We're doing all right. We were we were a little uh a little, a little groggy yesterday. We were messy yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure what year it was yesterday, but we're back now. Well, we're in we're in London. You've been here before. It's only been a few months since you were around the UK. Mm. How how used to our quaint little island ways have you gotten so far? Do you like it here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've I'm, we've spent a long time, a lot of time here. I mean, for the past five years, we've been coming back and forth to the UK. And Nick actually went to university here too. So yeah. So you used to you used to the south of England. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of different areas have you visited already? You've got uh, the accent down. We, <laughs> uh, my accent is terrible. My, w you see, in, in America, we sort of just hear the British accent, mm -hmm. just the British accent. James but Bond accent kind of thing. Maybe, yeah. But it, it all sounds like British to us. And here, I if I did a British accent, I would just jump around to different... You know, different areas. Different areas, never the same one, and probably, probably two different ones in the same word. I kind of want to hear that now. We were victims of the night The chemical, physical, kryptonite Help us to the face and fade You're, you're going on tour um, right now. You're visiting what, Manchester, you've got Birmingham, Glasgow, and London. Yes. So if someone was like, see you, Jimmy, get your uh, uh, battered Mars bar and an name brew, you know where I'm coming from there. The Glasgow, <laughs> up north. Yes. Yeah. Well, roughly speaking, I've probably offended. Do a you lot want of chocolate people. and a beer? Is that what yeah. you wanted? Yeah, the batter. Oh, I'm getting battered good. Battered Mars bar. Yeah. 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 Okay. With bread oh, crumbs and everything. I can only do a, a Scottish accent if I'm yelling. I mean, my mm, only, uh, my, my go-to British is Jon Snow right now. That's like all I can think of. Up north, Jon Snow. Not Jon Snow, the newsreader. No. <laughs> oh, there's another guy, Jon Oh, yes. He's been around far longer than, no, I mean, than John TV's Jon Snow. Jon Snow. <laughs> Snow. You know nothing, Jon Snow. That kind of, yeah. that's closer to Manchester. Or uh, Birmingham, if you go there and ask for like, chips and gravy. You all right, my chips and gravy? <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is, I think we'll find bang on Brummy accent. There's some amazing faces happening <laughs> over here in the peanut gallery. <laughs> you guys, you should be writing this down because this is going to help you, you know, assimilate into these areas like that. That's, in, it's, it's so insane to me. Like you could, you just change your accent slightly and somebody moved 20 miles. In America, you could have the same accent over the course of 2,000 miles, you know? Okay, the sound, the sound of the band. Now, I would describe you, I've written some notes down here, I would describe you as a sort of Peter Gabriel, Wang Chung, Talking Heads, OK Go, we are scientists soup of noise. All right, um, <laughs> love it. But people have called you a kind of new wave, uh, new wave indie pop rock kind of sound. I mean, how would you guys describe yourselves? What are you comfortable with? And Wang Chung nails it on the head. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty amazing. I don't, that's always the hardest question. Um, we like, yeah, indie, pop, fiesta, unicorns, sparkling, electro, wrestling. Wrestling music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Um, I think that works. That works for me, right, guys? Yeah, it sounds good. You guys sort of um, broke through musical into the airwaves over the last few years. Uh, first album, 2010, I Want, I Want, then that kind of turned into 2012's mm -hmm. self titled album. Um, it's very well read, this guy. Yeah. Research, guys. Um, so you guys, you guys kind of came through at that time, and you kind of referred to as a as a summer band in a way. Anna's Son was a huge, big summer hit. Were you were you comfortable with that kind of high energy summer label, or are you trying to explore some new things with the new album? Yes and yes. 
Um, we we love being the summer band, and we we grew up. Uh, we cut our teeth being the party band and uh, just you know trying to get people to dance. But on this new record, we have definitely explored some uncharted territory, uh, previously uncharted by Walk the Moon anyway. Um, so I think you know Shut Up and Dance kind of carries the torch of of old Walk the Moon with sort of upbeat uh, electro rocky vibes. But on the new record, you'll hear some more uh, dark. Uh, influences and some some heavier guitars and rock and roll screams but then there's also a um, whole other side that's a lot more tender and uh, and uh, I don't know romantic even um, it sounds scapey Uh, talking about your, your summer plans this year, I, I have read that you've got a very, very exciting date with Mr. Mick Jagger and friends. Uh, <laughs> you guys are opening for the Rolling Stones. Yes. What the hell do you do when you get that phone call? <laughs> we, 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 we just laughed. We haven't shook after many phone calls, but that we definitely shook after that one. Yeah, we were... We didn't know Shaken. We, shaken. Were shaken. we were shaken. We were shaken. shook hands. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, guys. Thanks for getting this far. <laughs> nobody, nobody die between now and then, please. Right. Yeah. Right. In both bands. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, please make it. Please make it. <laughs> Keith Richards is going to be the only it's one. It's only left. a couple months. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it is such a. I mean, it's such an honor. I mean, and it's just kind of one of those ridiculous pipe dreams you kind of joke about or something that. It's not ever supposed to come true, and, it, and it's just wild. It's really, really, really cool. How, how are you going to put your own stamp on, on a gig like that? Because you guys, you guys have become very well known now for involving your audience. Um, you start using paint both on yourselves and on them, like some sort of crazy musical cult. How did that, how did that <laughs> start in the first place? What's the source of that? Uh, that started way back uh, with the Anison music video. We you know, painted each other's faces for that so, to sort of have a Lost Boys uh, Neverland kind of vibe, you know, the eternal child, which is still part of who we are. Um, and it just accidentally became this tradition. Fans started coming to shows dressed as people in the video, and then we started painting our faces too. And, uh, and now it's just something that we do. Do you think you'd be under some pressure uh, come the Rolling Stones gig to try, and, to try and push yourselves out there a little bit? I mean, it's, it's their concert in a way. You don't want to overstep the mark, but you're going to be bringing some neon paint and try and get some of their fans involved? Yeah, we need to, we need to bring enough paint for 40,000 people. Uh, <laughs> Just have like a super soaker. It would be like, it, like a t-shirt gun, uh, yeah. but with just but with paint. paint. P balloons full of paint will just launch. The lawsuits of blinded uh, fans that day are going to shut you guys down <laughs> like that. But and I'm that's how we'll make our mark. Yeah. That's <laughs> how we'll make our mark. Band gets sued after Rolling Stones gig. We'll live on forever, man. The name, the name of the latest album, um, Talking Is Hard, you guys have had a pretty wild few years. Um, surely you must have made some friends in that time. Is, is talking that difficult? <laughs> talking is hard. We, um, I, I, think we, I think we as people, as human beings, I think we crave to uh, connect with each other and with uh, the world and um, with the, you know, being in the present. And it's so hard, you know, we have cell phones, I mean, it's, we have this, all this amazing technology, you can connect with anyone all over the whole world, but uh, sometimes there's so much, it's hard to feel just present in your own life, it's hard to talk to someone that's right next to you. And uh, so the record as a whole is about empowerment and uh, having the courage to, to be yourself and to speak your mind and to figure out what you really care about and um, to not be afraid. I was listening to a few of the songs recently, like um, Avalanche, and it seemed they seemed almost a little heavy is probably the wrong word, but maybe even faster paced to what you've been used to in the past. Uh, is that sort of a movement for you guys now? Are you feeling like the more you travel, the bigger you get, the more fans you have, 
the more energy you have to create music and that's kind of transpiring in the songs that you're writing? Or was I just in a really, you know, hyper mood when I listened to it <laughs> and got the wrong end of the stick? Definitely. Um, I think we intentionally went in with higher ambitions on this record. We wanted to um, try stuff that we'd never tried before and, uh, and raise the bar, I guess, with the, the energy and the, the lyric content and uh, the, whole, the whole nine yards. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think some of the songs, I think we're, we're better now. I think we, we figured out um, a little, uh, I don't know, we were, we were better this time at capturing the live energy because that's really what's most important to us is, is somehow, some way bringing the live show onto the record. Mm. Um, and, it's, and you can't do it by just pressing record and us playing in a room. We had, to, we had to figure out how to make it sound just as spontaneous and, um, and sort of off the rails, you know? Not to put a lot of pressure on you guys, but there is there is an added pressure now when you have a, a lead single from an album, um, and obviously the album's been released over in the states and it comes out in June over here. But when you have a lead single that does so well, that gets played so much all over, you've got what, 25 million views on YouTube, like 70 or 80 odd million plays across the world. Uh, you were on uh, what the Billboard t uh, top five in the top 100. You got number one in the alternative charts. He's that good. adds a pressure for, for the rest of the album to, to kind of follow through with that. Have you thought about this yet, or have, have I just like ruined your day? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I mean, the, the higher that, uh, that Shut Up and Dance climbs, the higher the next one has to climb, for sure. Um, you know, but it's all, it's all good, right? I mean, it's all, gonna, it's all just yeah. good problems to have, yeah, I guess. Yeah. The songs are gonna do what the songs are gonna do. Uh, we're, I mean, especially with a song like Shut Up and Dance, it's it's doing so much on its own, and we're just gonna try and support it with the next thing that comes out as much as we can. And I don't know, we're we're up for anything. I mean, we're not demanding any any craziness out of the next stuff. Yeah, we're getting we're getting ready to roll um, in the United States um, with this song called Different Colors. We're getting ready to start pushing that at radio, and I think it's it's an entirely different thing because it's really a. Um, uh, uh, a song with a message that we believe in, which is um, that of empowerment and kind of not just tolerating each other, but celebrating each other and our differences and, and who we are. Um, and, and so I think pushing that message is gonna feel really good. You know what I mean? No matter what it does on the chart, I think just putting that out there and trying to put that positivity into the world is gonna be satisfying for us. Even if it doesn't, you know, even if it gets four plays on Spotify and compared to the hundred million or whatever, you know, I think I think that will be rewarding in its own way. And you're right, it's it's good problems to have. It's better than sitting at home in your pants eating cereal all day. Well, that's that pretty good. Issue. That sounds awesome to me. Solid right now, it's actually. a solid afternoon, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that's, that's my plans for the whole of Bank Holiday weekend. Ooh, ooh, shut up, shut up. 